evening, gentle listener, and welcome to Distractable. This week, Bob is Quizmaster, yet performs heinous chicanery as he and Wade stitch up their hombre. Majestic Mark has tech issues, gets seasick while swinging, and reports epiphanies over hooks and magnets. Wade slowly munches on a muff, sorry, muffin, while reminiscing over vomiting on grannies, crying, and fencing with scissors. From school days to principal singers, yes, it's time for our firsts. Now sit back and prepare to be distracted and enjoy the show. Hello and welcome to Distractable, where everything is normal and just like it always is. Two and a half men. A A warm welcome to our gentle listeners and an extra special, even hotter welcome to our gentle viewers violent viewers uh, that's you you know oh, i don't like it. that our vvs uh, you know, only on spotify if you want to watch the video it's only available on spotify make sure you check it out our vivacious viewers what's vivacious meaning you should probably know that before you say it out loud uh anyway welcome to yet another spotify attractively lively and animated oh man this is a rowdy one that's good. That'll work. That'll work for the topic today. Welcome back to another episode of Distractable, the show where one of us hosts and two of us compete to win, and, and when you win, then you host the next one. That's the deal. As the host, I will be, I brought a topic, and we're going to talk about it, and they're going to get some points or something, or I'll just pick a winner at random, and uh, that's the way the show's going to go. And as always, I am joined, I'm your host, Bob, I don't know if I even said that, my name's Bob, and I'm joined by my two competitors for the day, Mark and Wade. Hi. Where is Mark? Have you seen him? I'm down here. I'm we have Mark's camera has been adjusted to reflect his actual height. Hello. So if you saw the three of us standing next to each other, Wade and I are about the same height. Uh, and then this is the, the mark is the correct. It's been corrected to display the height it's, difference. Yeah, it's actually it's actually pretty close. <laughs> it's, yeah. <laughs> I think this is actually what it would be. If you I like the rule of thirds we got going on here. Two thirds uh, of the camera is Bob and I. One uh, third yeah. of the camera is Mark's nose up. Hello. Yeah. Uh, my chair is... I think it's settled. It's settled at the bottom. Are okay. you going to change your camera, or are you going to put no, your chair back up? To, here we go again. <laughs> going back up. All right, we get to watch over the next 15 seconds as Mark sinks again. It's my big boy chair. All right, let's see if it stays up this time. Well, if you're not watching the episode on video format, you're going to miss Mark slowly sinking off the bottom of his camera <laughs> over the course of the next hour. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. But yeah, how's it how's it going? We always start with small talk, and I I I have served traditions. I will allow it. Go with small talk. How other than Mark's chair being broken and leaky? Apparently, how's it going? How you guys doing? Good, good, Pretty good, good, good. You know, I got a muffin. Oh, oh. what kind of muffin? I can't blueberry, the best kind. Oh. That is possibly the best kind of muffin. I ate so much pizza this morning that it gave me heartburn. I can't eat pizza after like 10 p.m. or I turn into a heartburn gremlin. I, I don't know what happened to me is like, cause I've been, this is funny thing where I was doing that, that diet for a while where I was trying to like slim down for uh, the movie and I was just, um, and it worked. But as soon as I started filming, I was working so much and I was eating like three meals a day. I was eating well, but I was dropping weight still. So I was like, it got to the point where my costume wasn't fitting anymore. Cause like it, I had actually slimmed down so much. Um, so then everyone like started a conspiracy to keep me eating more. And, and it was, it was, it was crazy. Cause I would get a, a random third meal of the day. Cause we get the great breakfast, great lunch. And then, uh, the crafty guy, Kevin, he would just start cooking me meals, uh, in the <laughs> middle of the afternoon and just for me. And then sometimes just for everybody, if you could get like a good deal on like one of those large, you got that concierge meal service is what you're saying. So this morning I, we had pizza and this morning I was like, I'm going to eat, I'm going to eat good. And so I had two slices of pizza and then four garlic knots and like lots of garlic sauce and lots of pizza sauce. And my, I, I don't get heartburn a lot, but my esophagus, uh, my, my, my esophagus burned more than it ever has. It was just like outrageous pain this morning. So that was my morning. You're supposed to be dead. <sighs> Air conditioning turn back. Oh, <laughs> Concierge, what are you doing? <laughs> you just see Amy close the door slowly behind him and it's like, oh. No, no, no. I just like to keep the ghosts away for a while, you know, just like shouting around. Just like, the air just turned on. I don't know why. <laughs> a, a picture flies off the wall across the room behind him. You're supposed to be 
be dead! <laughs> Look at that! I don't care! Uh, let me turn my uh, my air conditioning off so uh, Will doesn't hate me for the audio. Carry on the episode, though. Yeah, we'll keep going. All right, he can't hear us. I'm, I'm you, you win already, okay, Wade? Okay. I'm going to play Excellent. it up in the episode like I really like Mark's answers to whatever. Should I make it I'm as gonna... hard as possible for him to like agree that I should win? Like He'll be like, there's no chance. Yeah, no, really antagonize, like be and like antagonize me or whatever. Like do you know do whatever. Just make it like no shot, and I'll like take I'll like take points away from you, whatever. I'll make it seem like it's not even close. Perfect. Okay, deal. Oh, hey, buddy. What did I miss? Oh, we just small talk. Really nothing. We're just doing small nothing. talk without you, I guess. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. What, what what's going on? What's uh, what's with your lives? For me, same baby stuff still sleeping problems still doesn't like bottles same thing as last time it's a i got two bites into a muffin all right our lives are not all as fascinating as yours with your leaky chair and your concierge service and movie whatever. filming you know i do you know i have been having a problem uh my entire life mark whatever the opposite of that thing where you're not able to maintain your weight because you're losing weight accidentally even though you're eating i have the opposite of that where no matter what I've done or how much pizza I eat, I always seem to gain weight. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I have a I have a craft person living in my house not making me food, but it's not working. Mm, I see, I see. I, I hired see. a tapeworm, but the tapeworm's just not doing its job. Dude, I would love a tapeworm. Come on here, steal some of them calories. I don't eat those. I don't think that's exactly them. how it works. Can we start a, a go tapeworm me for Bob? I think I think that's like straight out of like a 1920s diet ad. <laughs> Safe, no side effects. Do you want to lose weight without changing a thing? Dr. Scrump's tapeworms can do you right. <laughs> yeah, Come get no, a jar of eggs, mix them into your morning coffee for three days in a row, and you'll definitely get a tapeworm. And that little man will do all the work for you. You like hold up the thing with the three little red lines. You're like, honey, I'm tapewormed. We're, we're tapewormed. Oh my god! <laughs> the thing with the three little red lines. Yeah, like the birth detector, but it's your it's your tapeworm detector. The birth detector. The birth detector. <laughs> what a reference! I don't know if it was on purpose or not, but you guys remember when we talked about birth detectors? No, wait. What? That's what I called pregnancy tests, like on stream one time on accident. <laughs> birth detector. Yeah, I couldn't think of the word pregnancy test. So I called it a birth detector. You hold, you hold up the old uh, birth detector. Uh huh. Yeah. Beep, 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 beep. Uh, so, you know, it's personal life stuff. It's all going well. It's all going well. Uh, I do have a topic for today's, and I don't think it's a repeat. <clears throat> well, there's only a 50% chance since you're hosting. Yeah, it's not great. But we're going to try it anyway. Uh, mm. And I, I only, I'll even tell you ahead of time what the topic is. Today, we're going to be talking about firsts. And specifically, mm. firsts mm. in our lives. First, mm. The first time we did or experienced things. And I have a couple reasons I'd want to talk about this because we're going to talk about like childhood stuff. You do a lot of things for the first time when you're a kid. Mm -hmm. I don't remember yeah. like a lot of that. I'll be making all of this up. Yeah. Well, we can talk about that. I'm just curious. But anyway, we're going to be talking about firsts. And so I've got a, a variety of things. But the first first that I want to talk about is kind of a classic. Oh, and I'm just going to give you points. This is, you know, how, uh, the subreddit's always like, you guys changed. You don't do the, this episodes where you just talk about stuff. Just going to talk about stuff. <laughs> there got you it. go. Complainers. You got what you wanted. But the first one is, is very classic. First day of school. And it can be the earliest first day of school that you do remember. How far back does that go for you guys? Because I feel like the first day of school that I remember most is like middle school. <laughs> Skipped over a lot of years there for me. I have weird memories of kindergarten, and I'm pretty sure it's not my first day. I'm pretty sure it's a blur of that whole year that in my mind is one. It's in one memory in my mind, but I'm, I know it wasn't all from one day. It's just like a memory of all all of kindergarten for you or something yeah how, do you want me to just go or are we going to do like titles or something how do you want to talk about it because I, I can go in i don't know if you need a second mark I, I can go in on what i remember no i know i know if you guys let's do titles let's uh, do right. that that sounds fun wait what's your title vomiting again hmm. well it doesn't sound like a first if it's again i'm just gonna say but i got a mind. Uh, mine's what are those for <laughs> i'm curious about both of these i'm honest they're pretty good titles but uh Mark wins the title. Wade gets to go first. Yes! It's 
Sorry. Fine for Mark. Fine. It was a little, a little too much. The first memory I have when I think about, I didn't, I didn't go to preschool. I went one time. So I guess if you count preschool, I went one time with a friend to experience it. I remember there being, in my brain, there was a trampoline. I don't, there can't possibly have been one, but in my brain there was, and I had an apple. At school? At preschool. Like when I think about like my one day at preschool I ever had, I, I, in my head, there was a trampoline and an apple. And that's all I have. If we're talking about kindergarten, I remember waiting for the bus, which there's nothing that interesting about it. Like the bus stop was like right in front of my driveway. There just happened to be like another street that intersected right in front of my driveway. And the bus stopped right there. So I'd like walk up my driveway, wait by the stop sign. I remember a couple of the kids that I got on the bus with. Kindergarten itself, I remember being scared of Tyler, using safety scissors and cutting the tip of another kid's nose. On the first day? I, again, I don't think it was the first day, but this is what I remember. I don't know when the order of events, but I do remember there was a girl who came in every single day. She cried for her dad whenever she had to be like, he got, she got dropped off. I, her dad was a firefighter, I think. And like, he would come, he was a cool dude. But I remember her being like, just so sad that he left every single day. She would cry until she threw up like every single day. And so like my biggest memory of kindergarten is like story time, sitting on like a carpet gathered around, like listening to a book, but the smell of vomit will be sat on the floor because it was just like, it's so much. There was so much vomit. She got sick every day. Mm. And it's really sad to think about, like, you know, she missed her dad that much, but like at the time, oh, baby, it was just the smell of vomit. So I think of Tyler punching everybody, being scared of him, cutting a kid's nose and vomit. What, Tyler from Go My Favorite Sports Team? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Tyler from the hit sports podcast, Go My Favorite Sports Team? I can't believe that. When I listen to that top podcast, I he sounds like such a nice guy. And he's such a master of balls and holes. Um, he is. Don't know about first day other than the vomit. I know the vomiting happened day one. Do you remember your motivation for trying to cut another child's nose off? We were sword fighting with scissors. So it wasn't intentional. Um, <laughs> that'll happen. Like, well, there was no ill intent on either one of our parts. We were just sword fighting with scissors. And I got sent out into the hallway afterward. My punishment <laughs> for cutting this dude's nose with scissors was go sit in the hallway for a few minutes. And Tyler was already out there because he was already in trouble or something. Because I remember That's I walked out to sit on the floor and I looked over and saw him. So I went to the other side of the hall to get away from him. <laughs> he was terrifying as a kid. Man. That's one of those young boy moments that I feel like all boys have where you were fighting and then you, you sliced his nose and he was kind of like, ah, ah. He, I don't know if he cried or not. I mean, we were kindergarten. So like, you know, we were all prone to like very easily crying at things at that age. But like, I don't remember him crying. Like you probably can't punish a kid by sending him out in the hallway anymore, right? Like I, I doubt they'd even let you do that. I've always thought that the existing forms of school punishment were kind of insane. A kid is like, yeah, I hate school. I'm going to act out. And they're like, no school for you. Get out of here. You're suspended. If you have no one watching over you and like, you know, and you're that young, I, I feel like they or someone to be watching you at all times. No, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. It just seems like one no, of those things they might not do. Probably not the approach anymore. Who knows? There's probably one kindergarten teacher for like 80 kindergartners. So I actually like remember like my senses whenever I started talking about this like got that scent of vomit and cleaner combo because it happened so much in kindergarten that like whenever I that memory came with the scent of sitting on the carpet and smelling that combination of cleaner and vomit and it's awful <laughs> did this girl at any point learn that this was going to happen and start vomiting into a toilet or a trash can or anything or was it always just like <sighs> oh no Bleh! in the class i feel like she spent like, i mean she cried for a very long time and she would like try to stop and then start up again so mm -hmm. I feel like it would just so randomly happen that she would burst out crying and then, like, get sick. So it usually ended up on the floor. Yeah. Isn't that just a thing with kids where they just vomit at any random time and just... I mean, that's kind of a baby thing, but I feel like... I feel like kindergarten, you're five years old-ish. You're kind of... I feel like that's the point where kids don't vomit uh, randomly as much. Maybe they do. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I vomited on my ex's grandma once. <laughs> got her. No, we were in a car and I was in the back seat. And I randomly got sick and like, there's sometimes where you get sick and there's nothing you can do. And it was just one of those moments. And she was sitting right in front of me and it was just, she had her hair all nicely done and stuff, dude. I feel so bad. I, I was outside the other day because I'd been like on a set all day. So I don't see the sun a lot. So one weekend, like last weekend, I was out sitting 
on the the back porch and I was getting some sun and I was like, oh, that's nice for like 10 minutes. And then I got 10 minutes on the other side. I was like, okay, I don't want to get tan because I like change. Um, but I sat on this like swinging hammock out back there and I sat on there for maybe like a minute. And then I was like nauseous. For some reason, I was like completely seasick, motion sickness, and I was like, ha ha, that's funny. And then it kept getting worse, and I was like, oh, guys, we, we're going out to like go get Korean barbecue or something, and then I just kept like, mm, hold on, and then I went to the bathroom, and I had to God. puke. Literally, Damn. I had to puke, because I think it was just like the sun, because your body makes a lot of vitamins when it gets sunlight. I think it's just like a sudden surge of like these vitamins vitamin D and whatever else there. And then I sit on the swing and I swing for a bit. I had to puke. And that was the first time I just had to puke at random. This is concerning. So either your weird diet things that you do, the diet fads you try are killing you, or you're getting older. Because you started off today talking about your heartburn from eating pizza. And now you're puking, eating your Korean barbecue from sitting on a hammock. We can shit, we can shit on my, my weird, it's not weird, my weird <laughs> diet. You do <laughs> weird <laughs> things. I don't do weird things. I do, <laughs> you're like, I'm only going to eat white cheeses for a month. And then like the next month, you're like, I'm going to sleep 15 minutes at a time. That's a complete exaggeration you do of what weird I'm doing. Shit. Name another weird thing I do if you're so smart about my life. Mark doesn't drink anything that's thinner than Jello. That's a lie. I, okay, I did try to <laughs> eat a lot of sugar-free Jello <laughs> in my life. Okay, okay. I like how we can just make up weird shit and Mark's like, I never, well, there was that one time. Mark only wears left foot socks. Okay, but that's just because I, I lose track of them. How am I supposed to know what, what so and I do buy them in left and right pairs. I don't even so have don't to know. do this. Bob's doing it for me. I guess Bob can take my point. That's no, fine. Wait, you give me, what do you think you know about me? You know it. Yeah, do one, Wade. Do one. Uh, you're, you're so weird that uh, you grow your hair out to weird lengths and you dye it weird colors sometimes. And then like, you look really nice with it. One way you're like, no, what if I ruin it? And then I eat only like cow feet and chicken legs for a month. <laughs> Where did you go oh with that God. one? My hair. I don't know, my... man. You said to do one. I just made. I just talked. <laughs> did you hear? Did you hear my examples that I gave you? You got to pick a thing and then make it weird. Any mm. arbitrary thing, you just pay. You know, Mark. Uh, Mark brushes his teeth, uh, but only with uh, sticks. <laughs> it's a fad. You use the bark on the stick to clean Look, your it's teeth. It's true, actually. Bark is better than bristles for getting between the teeth. Because if the bark's between your teeth, food can't get there. Anyway, whatever. This is dumb. I'm talking about my kindergarten. God, tell me, what was your uh, title again, Mark? What are those for? What? That's what I said it earlier. You said you gave me a point for Oh, it. what are those for? I thought you were asking me what titles were for. I was like, oh, what do you mean? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's, it's so that I know what your story's about, Mark. The title? What are those for? Uh, yeah. What are those for? <laughs> Got it. Private school. Right. Sorry. Continue. So Continue. yeah, it's not, it wasn't a private school. It's called Calvary Christian Academy. Uh, it was a church basically, and a tiny one at that. Um, and they had like a school program. I don't know. When I say this thing was small, like imagine the smallest church you have in your town. That's about it. Was it a cult? No. Well, it depends on your definition of church, really. So <laughs> a lot of religions could. But anyway, let's not get into that discussion now. My first memory of the school day that I went is kind of a blur, but I do remember the first time I was dropped there, dropped there specifically for school, and it was for kindergarten, and I had a backpack, and I didn't understand what a backpack was about, and I didn't understand why I needed a backpack, or what was supposed to go in my backpack, or why I carried it on my back. I didn't understand. Backpack threw me off a lot. Mm. I didn't get it. It made no sense to me. And then um, I had always looked at these in the church because, it's again, it's a very small church and they had classrooms in the back, and which is like two rooms in the back, one across the hall from the other, and a little play area. And I always remembered, oh, there are these weird like wooden pegs on the wall up where I almost couldn't reach, and then wooden cubes for things. And they were always empty, and I'm like... What are those for? What are those for? What are those for? It's super weird. What are those for? Why are these empty? Why are these, why are these wooden sticks on the thing? And I would ask and I, either, you know, my parents would tell me what it was and it went like right through my brain. But when I showed up for the first day with my backpack, my tiny little backpack, and then I walked up and they told me, okay, put your bag on the hook. Like, my whole brain exploded. It, you, neurons connecting, you know, go... 
<gasps> and I became obsessed <laughs> with the cubby holes. Like, I, and I, I just like, I was like obsessed with like this store. So it was like, this is my store my space for my stuff and then the concept of my stuff versus other people's stuff started flooding into my head like, like honestly people have different stuff and there's different people like it was, it was a very bizarre time <laughs> and i i don't remember anything else of any kind of experience in like first grade or kindergarten or stuff like that but i remember just sitting there like you just unlocked something in my brain, too. Really? I do yeah. think that's an important part of what you're supposed to learn in kindergarten. I just love the idea, like, you're standing there frozen, and you're just like, oh. and the teacher comes up and is like, Mark? <laughs> are you, Mark, are you okay? And you just turn, and you're like, I'm learning! <laughs> <laughs> I'm learning things! <laughs> like, your brain is exploding inside. <laughs> Yeah, no, that was that was a weird moment. Um, and then it was uh, like, you know, the rest of it's a blur, you know, but it's kindergarten, which is basically just draw for a bit. Now sleep, sleep now. Lights are going out. I forgot all about nap time. Like I did not have any recollection of that whatsoever until you brought up like the my space. And I was like, oh, it's kind of like the space I had to sleep. We slept. I never could sleep at night. I couldn't either. I, you couldn't, were, I, was, I probably yeah. did, but like... It was always like this, you know, my head's down and I'm just looking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel like that's my memory, but I probably did eventually fall asleep that young. Oh, yeah, I probably fell asleep too, but who knows. All right, you, you, you've you unlocked something for me as well, but it's not as positive of a memory. You know what my big memory is from kindergarten? Mm. They required you to have a box with your name on it with extra pants. <laughs> and extra underwear. And I'm not going to talk about specifically why, but let's just say I was a heavy user of my box allocation. <laughs> I was a frequent box visitor, and my teacher knew right where my box was. Uh-huh, yeah. <sighs> Stupid box. That, that was the thing, too. This is the thing that happens. That box is like it burned into my memory because it was... Uh, it, we used it all the time at school. It was very embarrassing. That box lived in our house forever. It had my name written on it in Sharpie. And as soon as I didn't need it at school anymore, it became like a box where you keep the whatever's in the closet. And every time I go in that closet, you see the box and you're like, mmm, piss box. <laughs> hey, piss box. I'm glad we keep gloves in you now. You used to hold pissy pants. <laughs> it's the same box, man. That's weird. I hope you cleaned it. How do you clean a cardboard box? How do you well, do that? It, no, it was it was plastic. It was, it was like a Tupperware, oh, right? Okay, it's like a plastic okay, box. Gotcha, gotcha. It's a very elaborate. My dad carved it out of an old tree. Out of steel. It's a family piss box. It was made out of human skin. <laughs> it was really. My father's before me and his father's before him have passed this piss box down. Now it's yours. Actually, Actually generations, generations of, of hair. hair lacquered into the surface. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> The latch is actually just my grandparents' hair. Yeah, see the jewels? They're not baby teeth. All of them. I knew it was teeth. I knew it. We had the same <laughs> idea. Good. Of course it's teeth. Of course it's teeth. <laughs> Everyone knows that. Are we? Uh, do we all have this box in our head? Because we are really <laughs> coinciding <laughs> on its design. Bones <laughs> on like the corners of the box. The locks of baby's skull. Yeah, everyone seeing this, yes. The lips of the box stained with piss, like a like a smoker's lip stained with nicotine. Let's move on. Let's move on. Ah, oh, kindergarten. Because it didn't bring up the smell of uh, baby spit up, which I live with on an hourly basis here. Uh, mark point. Mark point. Point for Mark on that uh, one. I brought up vomit, but that, you know that's f whatever. It's fine. Vomit is just what you call. An adult's spit up, so or anyone who's not a baby, a young child vomits, a baby spits up. I don't mm -hmm. know why that's different, but I it is. feel like I should protest this. This is fucking stupid, but okay, the point was a sign. Uh, I feel like you shouldn't call your judge fucking stupid, but you know whatever. That's up. It to was you, indirect. Right, to you weren't supposed to get it, but I did do that, so that's fair. You did, yeah. No, you're right. Now you're really reinforcing it, so I'll remember that. And uh, all right, this one's related. Next, next, first. Second first, if you will. Mm -hmm. Okay. But this one I feel like is a different vibe. What do you remember as your first school trip? And I'll include, I'll broaden this to be like, this could be field trips while you're in school, or this could be like if you did a summer 
camp or something because a lot of kids will do like summer camps where you go away and you sort of sleep in a you know cabin somewhere any kind of thing what was your first like school trip organized trip type deal where you had like maybe camp counselors or you had a chaperones and that sort of thing i'll I'll just say i my first my memory of this is very strong in my school uh district it was like kind of a tradition that when you got to sixth grade in my school the way it's set up that's when you move from elementary school to middle school middle school for us was six through eight which i know is kind of weird compared to most middle schools or whatever uh but so our sixth grade year all, all the sixth graders always did like a trip over like a weekend where it's like you go away for a few days we would go to this place and sleep in cabins and eat in the dining hall and there were like camp counselors and you would do stuff like orienteering right you learn how to use a map and a compass to try and navigate from one place to another or like trust building exercise type things where you're you know we're collectively doing something as a group we're you know all these sorts of activities that was like the first time i ever went away with friends and i have such memories from that of like not of a lot of detail but of specific moments of things happening and just like being away from my parents and mostly around other kids with like, you know, chaperones sort of watching over us. It's quite that strong memory. It was, it's, it's for how little I remember of that part of my life. I remember that very, very, very strongly. And okay. it's mostly positive, which is surprising to me. But like, what, what do you guys have? I have a title, I guess. We're on title still. You still how you're thinking, Mark. You got one yet? I'm trying to remember if I'm confusing memories. That's my title. Confusing memories? No, I'm I'm trying to remember if I'm confusing memories. That's my title. Got it. So said Mr. My title is I'm lying. I feel like Mark's title is a little more confusing. Uh, I guess Wade gets the point for that one. Damn it. Oh yeah, I've come back, baby. Who's going first, Mark? I want to hear both of them, but you can go first. Oh yeah, I'm taking it. Why didn't I go first when I won the last title thing? I didn't get to go first, which I thought was super weird, but then I didn't question it, so it was, it was inconsistent. You know what, Mark, you're right, that's pretty unfair. Have a pity point. Wait, go ahead. Damn you! Uh, take your fucking point, man. Whatever. Okay. So <laughs> How are you I both think... dissatisfied about this? Wade, you get to go mm -hmm. first. Go. My story I'm going to tell, I think, is a lie because I don't think it's my first trip. And you asked about the first trip. But I don't remember my first trip. First memory. The first trip I think I did was I went to, like, a farm. And I vaguely remember walking around. But, like, I have no memories other than we went there and I smelled farm. So the one I remember doing is going down to, oh God, what's it called? Like where the Dinosaur Museum is in Cincinnati and they've got like the Omnimax Theater or whatever. Union Terminal, is that what it is? Oh yeah, like the museum. Yeah, so they've got like the dinosaurs and like the mummy exhibits and all that come in. So sure. my first like stronger memory is going there. And I was obsessed with dinosaurs as a kid. I went to school and my backpack was filled with dinosaur toys. Like up through like second or third grade. I was the kid you walk up to, it's like, oh, what's in your backpack? I'd pull out a giant brontosaurus toy, T-Rex. I had a pamphlet like comparing sizes of people to the dinosaur with all these dinosaur facts. I was a dinosaur nerd. And going to this museum and seeing the dinosaurs was so cool. Like the dinosaur bones and stuff. I used to get kits as a kid that I'm un memory unlocked where like you got like these little tools and you could like dig into this fake kit and like there'd be bones, dinosaur bones or whatever inside of it. And you could like break them down, and, like get the bones out and polish them, dust them. I love that. I wanted to be an archeologist so bad. And going to the museum and seeing the giant dinosaur bones was awesome. However, it all ended in terrible, like, crippling fear. Because at the end of walking around seeing the dinosaurs, we went to the Omnimax Theater. And for some reason, that place scared me so bad as a kid. I didn't trust it. It felt like, like, I was terrified of, like, roller coasters and rides as a kid. And walking into that big open place, having, like, the theater-style seating, like, looking up at the ceiling... I kept thinking it was going to be a ride, like the seats were going to drop or lift up or take off. And I remember sitting there watching whatever the movie was, which is really cool because it's like the whole ceiling is movie. Yeah, this is, a, this is a theater where the seating is very steep and kind of laid back and it's like a dome, right? Yeah. It's not like a screen at the front of a room. It's like a big, very cool dome thing and it's very, it's a very fancy thing. All the movies, like the camera shots, are you like going over hills and through things like through Egypt or through rainforests or like over the mountain, the snowy mountains. Like it's always very like a lot of moving people. I remember sitting there the whole time, like 
grabbing on to like the the handles of my seat like really hard because i kept expecting like something terrible to happen like i was gonna go for a ride so after all the enjoyment of the dinosaur bones sitting there and watching the omnimax while as cool as it was as a kid i was terrified that like we were going to like do a flip or do something terrible and i was gonna die i was so scared of the omnimax theater the first time i went there so scared all the right. whole time this is a tangent, but I have to tell the story because it's outstanding. Uh, in the Bay, in San Francisco, the California Academy of Sciences is um, is like a basically a museum place located in uh, the park, the Golden Gate Park. It's very cool. They have an Omnimax, and Manny and I want, went one night. They do this thing where they stay open late sometimes, and you can go and like have alcoholic drinks and walk around and see the exhibits. It's very cool. We did the Omnimax, and there was a dude sitting right behind us watching this Omnimax, which was like a very space focused one is like exploring the universe. So there's lots of space stuff that looks very cool. He was high off his ass. He was so high because we, it was cool, right? We're sitting there kind of like, whoa, cool. He was out loud during the entire thing. Every time something happened or like you fly around to, he was just like, oh, whoa. Oh my God. Oh, and now we're flying? Whoa! 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 That's crazy! The whole time! And, like, on one hand, I was like, dude, shut up, man. I want. But on the other hand, I was like, he's having the best time right now. Like, God damn. I am jealous, and I hope that he continues to enjoy this. Anyway, that's completely non sequitur, but that was the funniest shit because he was having such a good time and he couldn't keep it to himself. I want to go back. I've not been down there in so long. I want to go back and experience the Omnimax again now. This is crazy because it just reminds me, oh, yeah, we went to the same school because I couldn't remember if this was here. My first school trip was also to the Cincinnati Museum Center where there was the <laughs> Omnimax. And because we were we went to the same school. That's right. The same Grew trip. up together, right. I think in elementary school, I went to a farm. Like, it, I don't, anyway, go ahead. Mm -hmm. And I remember a farm too. Something that's hay bale bullshit. I don't know, like a maze yeah. or something. I, I don't know why. But I, but in this one, tell me if, I, if I'm confusing memories. Because uh, I don't remember the dinosaurs thing at all. But I know that's there. Was there like a, a, a like a booth in the main lobby area with magnets? I think so. Yes, like iron shavings, and it was like that was there because yeah. I was trying to remember because I didn't see a goddamn other thing there. Because the same with the pegs on the the ceiling there. When I saw magnets and I saw like the iron shavings just like move on their own, my brain once again went, <laughs> but it couldn't make the connection. It was like. <laughs> We didn't stay in the lobby the whole time. We walked around the exhibit. I did. I was in the lobby the whole time. I thought we had chaperones that kind of like forced us to stick together. Could you in, just... my, in my body, I was elsewhere. My mind, I was still at those magnets. I don't remember a goddamn thing because I just saw the metal shavings and I was like, I probably, you probably thought I was a fucking weirdo because you'd look over and just see me just foaming at the mouth like, as I was walking through the dinosaurs. If we were in the Omnimax room and I was clinging and you were foaming at the mouth, I'd be like, see, I'm not crazy. He's also no. losing his shit here. It's terrifying. I remember the Omnimax, but even then, I remember seeing it. it was very cool, but I still was thinking about those those magnets. And I remember I got home and I was like, Dad, I need magnets. <laughs> magnets. <laughs> you bust in the door with your backpack and you see that your backpack hook and you're like, oh, okay, <laughs> now magnets. <laughs> yeah, but I remember when I actually got magnets because I didn't have iron shavings. And I just went clack clack. They get stick together. I'm like, these aren't magnets. Where's the metal shavings? <laughs> and I stopped playing with them. Wait, you didn't have the little like dude's face that you could like drag and make hair on? No, no. Like we, I don't think I was into Cracker Barrel at the time. And they had always had that for sale at Cracker Barrel. I remember later when I was older. I think I remember <laughs> taking the magnets afterwards and then discovering that they mess with the TV and going. Mm. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, you're not gonna hurt a CRT. It's probably fine. Grandma had a pacemaker, and I was like, man, if I put the magnets here, Grandma starts <laughs> coughing weird. <laughs> I put the magnet in a specific spot and grandma passes right out. It's crazy. <laughs> if I put it here, she gets real lively. All right. <laughs> Let's play. Yeah, no, I didn't. You know what I did? That didn't occur to me in talking about planning to talk about all the school stuff that you guys grew up in the exact same schools that you might have some overlapping experiences. May have. That's very funny. 
different experiences clearly i was happiest i've ever been most terrified i've ever been meanwhile mark's just like magnets so did that did that ruin dinosaurs forever for you then were you done wanting to be an archaeologist after the omnimax experience or was that just a terrifying I, that had nothing to do with dinosaurs in my brain that was just like the whole like once it was over i was like oh that was actually fine but like up until like we got up to leave it was like when does this become drop zone or something like i just kept expecting something horrible <laughs> to happen then when it didn't it was just like oh well, that was actually kind of cool i guess as my heart slowly settles down. But like, yeah, I did not trust anything at that point. But no, I still wanted to be for very long. I don't remember when I switched off of that. Had it been like junior, middle school, junior high. Like all of elementary school, I wanted to work with dinosaur bones. And Jurassic Park was my favorite movie. It might still be my favorite movie for so long. But like, yeah, that didn't change. Well, Mark? I told, I told my... Oh, that was your story? That, too? that was my to... story, yeah. Oh, yeah, just sorry. have it overlap. I, I, yeah, they oh, do wow. overlap. Literally, yeah. that that is the one. The magnets are was going to be my thing, but I just didn't know if I was misremembering that with something else. I just love the idea that we were walking around looking at all these things that were blowing my mind, and you were just like, metal. Magnets. That was that. That is a description of most of my early, early childhood. It's just like me not in in the same <laughs> universe as everyone else because i was just like what is this nonsense you know i wasn't socializing much so i was just always in my because i was just always in my head and i don't know maybe that was an adhd thing because even now you know if i i just let i'll be in a different zone and i've just learned to try to check in every once in a while what's happening around <laughs> me good co-story everybody both of Thank you, you collectively separately had the same ideas but different uh, and I think you each deserve a point for that. Thank you. Even though Wade started it off and he seemed to trigger a lot of your memory, uh, I think you really brought it home, Mark. It wouldn't have been the thank same you. without you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. See? Fair, Wade. You can't spot any bias, can you? No, I didn't think so. Thank you. I, I feel like... Okay. Mm-hmm. 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 You're going to insult me again? Hmm? In here I am, but yeah, I'm not going to say... I can lot. take points away. I can undo what I've done. Mm-hmm. Oh, don't tempt me. I always ask for it when that's offered. <laughs> I know you like that, don't you? You want me to take a point? Do you? No, I I know. I need my points. All right. Well, I, have, I have another first. I have another okay, first. Okay, yeah. Let's do that. I am not sure how this one will go. And if, wait, if you don't have one for this, we don't have to, it doesn't have to be worth points necessarily. Uh, but for, I know Mark has done performances, but I want to know if you have a memory of your first performance. I feel like it's a okay. pretty common thing to like sing in elementary school and you play recorder sometimes, stuff like that. Do you guys have a memory of the first time you ever performed? And it doesn't have to be music, but like if you were in a play or if, even if you were just like doing debate or something, whenever you performed like on a stage for a crowd for people, you know? I think I do. You got one, Mark? I do, yeah. What are, what are your, what's your title, Mark? Oh, say can you see? <laughs> That's my title. <laughs> Uh, Wade, what is your title? A Train and a Lost Principle. That doesn't sound good at all. Thank you. For being vulnerable and, and letting the voice crack out, point to Mark for the title. Oh, thanks. I'm going to let Wade go first, though, again. Okay. Excellent. All right. All right. So, the reason I called it both is that I don't actually remember if I was in the first one. So, we did a play. There was a play, I think, in, like, first grade that involved something with a train. And in my mind... I was in, like, the choir that didn't actually go on stage, but I stood there and, like, sang songs during the play. But I don't know if that's actually true or not. I can't remember if I remember watching it or if I was actually in it. The first one I really <laughs> remember performing was whenever I transferred from Milford South to, um, I've got Pleasant Hill. I think it was called Pleasant Hill. And then our principal retired, and they renamed the school Charles L. Seipelt after the principal that retired. But whenever he retired, like, the last day... We'd prepared this like thing where the students got up and like sang songs. And I remember singing the lyrics like, You've been the principal since 62. Oh, Charlie, we love you. And I remember like learning this song and singing it to our principal. And he'd been my principal for like one year. I didn't know him at all. And it was like, Dude, I just transferred here. Why am I singing love songs? This le dude leave it. Like, I probably didn't think of it like that, but it was weird to me because it's like, I just, everyone here is new to me and this guy's leaving. Like, I just left. No one sang to me when I left my school. But I remember singing that, but I was always the one who sang, like, <laughs> like, I didn't want to, like, <laughs> risk people actually hearing me sing. So I was, like, the hummer yeah. or the one who mouthed, like, <laughs> 
I think looking around like this might have put a spotlight on you. <laughs> we're all singing, right, guys? Uh, we're, 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 we're. <laughs> singing has always been one thing that scared me. Even now, like singing, when we did the musical improv, like for the tour, singing has always been like the one thing it's like, dude, I will go up and look like an asshole in front of people and I don't even care. But if I try to sing and I look bad, that would be the most devastating thing in the world. And I don't know why that's in my brain, but it always has been. So I remember mm. trying to either sing in that choir, which I don't really remember anything about other than there was a train, or singing goodbye to this principal I never knew. L watching everybody else sing and like, okay, they're doing it, I don't have to. We just your mouth closed. <laughs> <laughs> no, I always at least tried to sell it. It was always like... <laughs> I like a, a lot of kids go for that because singing and performing can be is clearly intimidating. It's not a thing that's that, that's fun necessarily when you're learning how to do it. Little younger introverted in public me. I was I was like I liked attention like it was my family, but people I didn't know. I was very introverted and scared as a kid. I like the image of just a whole choir of of Wades get up there, and the director is like. Well, and everyone's like, that <laughs> that's the sound that comes out. Every kid's <laughs> like, you do it. You do it. Everyone collectively is like, oh, shit, I thought you guys were going to sing. Oh, God. <laughs> well, Mark, how was your experience in that same choir, I assume? No, no, no. Mine was a different thing. I I don't think I was in the choir. Um my there's a different performance story that I would have told, but I think I talked about it before, and I definitely don't want to repeat topics here. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> Wait's over here throwing up again. I wasn't prepared for bullshit today. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, <clears throat> calm so down, mean. geez, <laughs> so mean. That story, like the magic school bus play, I've told you guys about that one, where with the teacher that hated my guts, and then I ruined the newspaper picture for. Mm. I've told that one, haven't I? If you have, I didn't listen. I don't <laughs> it's possible that both Wade and I don't remember it, and you did tell us. Probably. I'll let the viewers decide. But this is a different one because it actually, I think it happened before it, and it was another singing related thing. So it was uh, my dad being the sole career army man that he was, uh, really liked when I sang the Star Spangled Banner. Uh, cool, cool. <laughs> you know, the national anthem. And I Good sang song. it, and, I, and he was like, yeah, great. And then he would, he would like, I would do it because he was like, yeah, I did it. And apparently I was good at it. I was like, yay, okay. And I remember being at, like, some random party. This is, I don't know when the time scale is of when I started doing this to this party. But I've been doing it for at least a, a few months. Okay, you say party. How old about were you? Because I'm picturing like high school or college mark. No, 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 no. It wasn't a party. My party. My dad had like, it was a neighborly get together gotcha. kind okay. of thing. Okay. Mm, so it was like, okay. you yeah, know, barbecue. Just, some barbecue. Yeah, something like that. And I remember uh, I was, I didn't know what was going on. The same way with everything. I was just like, oh, other people, I don't know what this is and why people are here. And I just remember like, I don't remember getting there. I don't remember leaving. My memory just picks up right from this moment when this is happening, which my dad was like, yeah, you can sing. He can sing. Sing. Why don't you sing oh, God. for him? <laughs> oh, no. And it's don't, just like, no, no, And no. all these adults are just like, oh, you can sing. Oh, you, you can sing, can you? And it's just like, I'm just like, what? What? Uh, what? And then my dad's like, yeah, sing, sing. And so I go... Oh, oh, can you sit? And it's like my voice cracks immediately, and I just freeze, and I'm stuck, and I can't move, and I, I just want to explode on the spot. It's my first experience with, like, burning shame. I had no idea why I was there or what happened. I thought it was, like, a dream or a nightmare, and it was just like... I still like the image better if you're going to like a college party, like bringing a 12 pack of beer, and someone's like, "Sing, oh, say, <laughs> that'd be like if you went to a college party and everyone was like, "Mark can do a Scottish accent." Mark, do a Scottish accent. Uh huh. Oh, I see. Can you see? Oh, can you see, lassie? <laughs> Yeah, so then I never wanted to sing again. I 
I I don't. Ugh. Did your dad do that a lot? The like, hey, Mark can sing. Sing a song for us, Mark. Well, I don't think he's done it in a few years. Well, hey, whoa. Well, hey. <laughs> <laughs> he might have. You know, there are ways to communicate. I don't know. There's messages. I don't know. Um, yeah, you go to a no, Ouija I, board, just like S say I N G, Daddy. <laughs> I've never known a parent like this in person, but I you see on like TV and movies, right, where there'll be parents who's like, yeah. Play the piano for us, child, or whatever at like a party, and and I kind of get that because it's like you're kind of showing off and you're you're encouraging your kid. Like, there's nothing wrong with doing that, even if it's not so great. Like, you're encouraging your kid to you know get comfortable with performing and having you know it's for fun. But in real life, that's such a weird thing to me. If that there are parents who would just be like, ah, my boy can play trumpet. Get your trumpet out. And I was like, no. It's encouraging campfire guitar guy at a young age. <laughs> hey, Mark, get your guitar. Play Wonderwall for him. The kid whose response is, oh, yeah, and they run and get whatever and start. That's campfire guitar guy. That's, that's true. Yeah. The that's ones that's like, oh, daddy, I already have my guitar right here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> this guitar? <laughs> <laughs> I brought it just in case. You know, my mom is still like that to this day, except it's with YouTube. Any, any human being doesn't matter who they are complete stranger friend a new friend that has been invited over to the house to meet me specifically <laughs> everyone is like did you know my son is famous youtuber here let me show you an entire 30 minute video of his right now Dude, i will never forget when you had to go and have like the uh, um your surgery done and we came to visit and as you were being like taken back into the room she was trying to follow with the camera and she's like my son's very important you take good care of him very important famous very important famous yeah <laughs> and they're like ma'am you can't come back here i told you about the last time that i was in the hospital i was like in the midst of after i took seven shots of laxatives and i was a, just stumbling to the bathroom desperately and my mom walks in with phone in hand like <laughs> Yeah. Already <laughs> recording on the way in, you know, I'm just like, oh, thanks, Bob. And I, and it was funny because did I tell you that Evan was there too? No, because um, no. Evan was accompanying her and picked her up from the airport, and he wanted to like check in on me. And then I'm like, I'm literally like, oh, why are you recording this? Get and he didn't even stay to say hi. He he bolted immediately. <laughs> after. I literally I, left. Well, you're gonna say he like helped you and grabbed the phone or something. You know, he was just like. Oh, he's like, I'll hold the phone for you while you go. What do you have to say to your viewers, Mark? <laughs> I, d I was so like, please, I gotta go. And then I duck in the bathroom, and I'm sure just horrendous poop noises. Your, and <laughs> your mom in front of the bathroom door doing like a selfie, and in the background, it's just <laughs> you like. Ah, ah, <laughs> he's very famous. <laughs> he's very famous. Very famous. <laughs> this yep. is what celebrity shit sound like. It sounds bad, but it doesn't stink. <laughs> Because he's very famous. Oh, that's my mom. That's my mom. Can't you can't say she's not supportive. Oh no, no, she's the most supportive. Aggressively supportive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's that's about that's nice. That's sweet. What were we talking about? Who wins? Well, since he's very famous, I think Mark probably wins this point. Yes. I mean, I guess at least I was voluntarily singing in a choir, and he was forced to sing in front of like his family, friends, at a barbecue. So I would rather be in my position than his. But like, go on, keep talking. No, I, I... keep keep advocating for Marty. I can give him more points. Does he deserve more points? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not going to go that. Are you I sure? Mean... I think the lady doth protest too much. Whatever, just go for it. You want to, just fucking do it. Two points point. for Mark. God damn it. Thank you. Thank you. That would you. be the worst. Like, if you encourage your kid beforehand, like, hey, do you want to sing or what? Like, that'd be one thing. Just, like, out of the blue, like, yeah, my kid, sing! Sing, damn you, sing! <laughs> sing, <laughs> damn you. He turns into the Phantom of the Opera. Sing for me! <laughs> Dad, what the, what the hell, man? Like, this is not a thing we've done before. Being put on the spot huh. is the worst. Having a little bit of like, mm. okay, I'm gonna, you're gonna sing. All right. Like, if you don't want to, at least you have preparation. Just like, do it now. I think Wade has fully accepted that everything's t tilted against him. He's not even fighting anymore. He's just. I'm <laughs> just like, you know, for the sake of conversation, I'm doing a podcast. I oh, would hate okay. that. So, like, <laughs> singing is so scary to me that just being like, do it is terrifying. I, I I pulled an Uno reverse on my dad, though, I remember now. Because he, he played a little bit of piano, but he didn't play a lot. 
But there was one, there was this one rhythm that he played with, like his left hand. It was like, doo 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 doo. It might have just been a warm up or something. But when he did it, like in in repetition, doo 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 doo. And I would, whenever he would play it, I would run around the house in a circle, and I loved it. So I would like, I'd be like, play, Dad, I wanna run, run and run. He'd be like, oh, I don't know if I can keep playing. My hands cramping up. I'm like, no. Keep playing! <laughs> and I'm just like running as fast as I can. <laughs> I mean, if it was, I think it was an exercise because it's like, it's a long reach. It's supposed to be. I don't, I can't, I'm not singing it to the exact notes, but it's like you hit, you hit a low note and then a high note and then you go up. Yeah, and so it hurt, it probably hurt his hand and I would just be like, more, more. Well, you said you pulled an Uno reverse. I thought you. I thought you were like, "Hey, we were at a party," and I was like, "My dad plays piano." <laughs> dad, go get the piano. <laughs> oh, this one. <laughs> as you're doing, as he's doing that, you're like, oh, "I'll help him." <laughs> oh, say, can you see? <laughs> uh, what a musical pair sounds like. A tour in the country is dad with four notes and kid who corrects voice. Da do 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 da do 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 da do do do. See, <laughs> just see, 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 see. <sighs> Beautiful, good stuff. Good All right, stuff. who got the point? Do I win? Uh, Mark got several points. Yeah, I got something. Did I get title point at least? Who got title point? Uh, I also uh, marked it. Oh, for fuck's sake, dude. All right, pity point for Wade. Calm down. Thank geez. you. <laughs> I think this is interesting, but it might be really hard. I'm just curious what you guys will come up with for this. I got to okay. be honest. The first time you realized something that you don't like about yourself. I feel like we're all old enough. Like, we're all adults now. We're, we, we're self-aware enough, I feel like. The three of us all must have things about ourselves we don't like or we wish we could change. That's a very like adult sentiment, right? You realize things, you're like, God, I wish I could, whatever. I feel like everyone has something they wish they could change or that they don't like, that they do or whatever. But as kids, you're not that self-aware. And there's a point where you are a kid and there's that first time where you realize like, oh, wait, I suck. Like, wait a minute, I did something, I was really mean to that person. Or like, you know, it's it comes in different ways, I'm sure. But there's got to be a point where you're a kid and you have that moment of like, oh, I did, why did I do that? I'm so sad, I'm so disappointed, I hate that about myself, whatever. I'm just curious if you guys have any memories like that. I do, but it doesn't perfectly fit the mold of how you're describing it. But I, I remember the first time I found a fault in myself that I hated. Well, not I don't know I don't know if it's the first. It's the one that stands out in my mind. Yeah, so first one you could remember is pretty <clears throat> fair. But okay. uh, I mean, yeah, Mark, do you feel like you're getting something? I yeah, I do. It, again, it's kind of like tangential. You'll fucking get a point for it anyway. So who gives a shit? <laughs> <laughs> point for Wade for spitting truth. Thank you. Oh hell yeah, dude! Comeback starts now. Do you guys have titles? Anything but that. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, that's some. That's some. <laughs> well, that's some trauma. I, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Is it all of that? That's some. <laughs> That's some uh, <laughs> That's some trauma. Okay. Point point to Mark for the long title. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> okay. Uh, and for the first time, you know what, Mark? Why don't you go first? Hey. All right. So yeah, this is a it's it's a complicated one, right? Because the first time that I hated something about myself isn't so much of a, a a nicety where it's like, oh man, I'm I'm sad that I did that thing. Uh, the first time that I hated myself was when I realized that I was that not only was I Korean, but that I was different than other people. So this is where it's like that's where that's some trauma uh, because it's it, it's what I think I've talked about before is like internalized racism. Um, and it's like because I was Korean in a predominantly white neighborhood, you're different. And so kids are mean and they'll bully you for anything that makes you different. And as soon as I it was like in, in the small private school, I didn't experience it. And then when I went to uh 
public elementary school, that's where I started to experience it. And I had no idea what it even meant because at that point in my life, like I, I knew my mom was Korean and I understood that on like a, that's just a fact level. I never saw anyone interact with my mom because most of my childhood, she was working night shifts. So I don't actually have a lot of memories of spending a lot of time. So she was always mm. sleeping in the day. So when I got to school, it was like all of a sudden I was being singled out for something that I didn't even know was a thing. And so when I would get like Asian jokes and people would like mock me for that, uh, I started to actually look at myself and be like, because at that point as a kid, when do you ever even look at yourself? When do you ever even think about yourself as like a human being? Um, you're just you and that's it. And so that's when I was like started to, to not like those parts about myself. And that like that, that that spiraled for a very long time, way longer than I would have ever liked. Um, but since then, I'm fine. I'm proud of who I am and happy with who I am just as a kid. Like, man, you things just worm into your brain and they, they don't go away for a long time. Well, equally as horrible and traumatic and unfair, I remember around third grade. We got our eyes tested and I was like, anything, please. No, just don't need glasses. Just don't need glasses. And then I found that I needed glasses. And I would say that's almost even worse than growing up with racism and hatred. Uh... <laughs> wow. You know what? <laughs> Point to Wade for being really brave about this. That's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not nearly the same thing, but like I remember putting on glasses and no matter what kind of whatever I was wearing, it was like I hated the way I looked. I knew people were going to like call me a nerd and bully me and hate me. I thought I looked stupid. I, to this day, there's like the first school photos we took after I got glasses and my ears were like big as a kid. I grew into them as an adult, but like they felt like they stuck out a lot when I was younger. They felt big. I remember our school pictures. We had to stand by a tree and like hug, hug the tree and like smile at the camera. And I was wearing these glasses and with the way my hair looked, the way my glasses, I looked at that picture and it's like, I look like my grandma and a monkey hybrid. <laughs> and I hated everything about that picture. And even now, if I look at that picture, like I feel like uncomfortable looking at myself. Cause I remember how much I hated that. And that's how I always saw myself with those glasses. For some reason it was like an old lady slash monkey. I felt like the frames pushed out my ears even more. Uh, super, super, like I was never confident in myself growing up. I don't know when I got that, but that was like after high school. Uh, but I remember like third, fourth grade whenever I had to get glasses because I transferred schools after first grade and I was only had like a couple of friends I felt close to. And then I got glasses. I was like, I'm never going to make any more friends. I'm the new guy still. And now I'm the new guy with glasses and everyone's going to hate me. And I look like a stupid nerd and all of this. And it was just as I was doing my vision test, it was just like, please, please, no, no, anything but glasses, anything but glasses. And I don't know why I felt that way, because, you know, right now I prefer my glasses to my contacts, typically, but... And then, like, 7th or 8th grade, I got contacts, and that's a whole other can, but... I would like to point out, I, no, I, I also had glasses, too, on top of my other... I am struggling to relate to having to wear glasses, so... <laughs> the other issues, are you saying that you're half Korean <laughs> is an issue? <laughs> on top of your other faults! <laughs> <laughs> There's a whole list, really. I had bad eyes, bad race. I had it all going wrong. God. <laughs> I don't know. I, I've always thought, like, I don't know. I always kind of, like, wanted to be different. I was, like, in that, like, you know, having, like, a different race. like uh, But not glasses. But glasses, to me, for some reason, were, like, the worst thing as a kid you could have to deal with. Like, I, I never cared about, like, I don't know why. Because definitely people got, like, picked on for being black or being Asian or whatever else. And people made, like, those kinds of jokes and stuff. But in my brain, like, wearing glasses for some reason was one of the worst things you could have to deal with. And maybe it was just because I projected that the fact that I had to deal with it that I thought it was bad for everyone else. But, like, I always felt so terrible for people that had to wear glasses. I don't know why. But that was young me's, like, thing that was, like, the worst that could happen to you is you have to wear glasses. I believe they call that internalized glassism. I'm a glassist. <laughs> I'm working on it, though. <laughs> Did you guys hear they're officially shutting down Google Glass Enterprise at the, uh, sometime this year? It's all, it's all over. It's all we gone. talked again. about that, I think, once. And it happened again. Yeah, no, those were interesting. That's Honestly, that's not entirely the direction I thought that might go, but that, those are both totally valid. I think for both of us, I don't want to speak for you, Mark, but I, th I feel like 
they're not necessarily things we should have hated about ourselves, but they were, happened when we were young enough that it made an imprint on us. And it took time for us to accept the fact that, well, for me, it was really dumb. You know, I don't have perfect vision. Woo. But, you know, just having to learn to accept yourself and like who you are, whether it's an imperfection, like, you know, not being able to see well or whatever have you. I feel like that sticks out more than like later on being like, I'm kind of a dick uh, because it happened when I was young. And like, as you get older, you kind of learn that you have faults and things that aren't perfect. But like when you're just a kid who doesn't think about any of that stuff and all of a sudden you're faced with the reality that like someone might not like you for something. It's like, I don't know, that's really traumatizing. It really is. It's hard. You don't have the emotional like tool set to be able to deal with those complex emotions because it's very complex. Well, uh, for having real problems, point to Mark for that one. What? Yes! Wait, what for having real problems? <laughs> <laughs> it's just not. <laughs> 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 oh, you, you, come on, you know what I meant. Wait, hey. Some truths uh, are coming out today. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, that was, that was, uh. Fuck, I didn't get a point again. God damn it. You're basically asking me to not give you points. Fuck it, dude. I, I'm already, I, I feel like this is like the last episode where I just was losing so bad there's not a chance. So fuck it. Whatever. This sucks. You all suck. I feel like it's what you want. Let's all, let's be honest. Like, it's on my terms, but I don't like losing outright. Like, I like to force I haven't to tabulated lose. the points yet, okay? So you don't know who wins. Uh, anyone keeping score along at home might have an idea, but you don't know how good I am at math. So I guess we'll see what happens. Uh, but yeah, I think that's going to be the last one. I had a whole list of these, and some of them I would still be really interested to talk about. We could definitely do this one again. This yeah. can go on the list of things we promise we'll do and never circle back to. All um, right. I did enjoy this. I didn't know how many firsts there could be, but these are some interesting... And they brought up so many memories. There's so many firsts, and there's so yeah. many ways to talk about it and things about... I think this would, would be a fun one to revisit for sure. But for now, that's going to be it. Uh, let me tabulate the scores. Really? That wasn't a score. I just got a text message I wasn't expecting. Uh, anyway, <laughs> I, was, I looked at my phone as a bit, but then there was a thing. I saw Mark look concerned. I was like, oh. Today's winner, for reasons completely unrelated to the score, and as a, might be kind of a surprise to Mark, is actually going to be Wade. Wait. You may Wait. think, you may be thinking currently, wait a minute, I tracked every time Bob mentioned points. Wait a minute. I, I feel like I had way more points than Wade, almost like Wade was trying to not earn points. Yeah, but when yeah. you stepped away twice at the beginning of today's episode, Wade extended his hand and made me an offer. And I told him, and I shook his hand, and I made a promise that he would win no matter what. That you were fighting a pointless battle, and that no matter how well you did, and you did do very well, and you really do deserve to win, if I look back on everything we talked about, you had some very good stories, Mark. You had no chance. You literally couldn't win. So, because I'm a man of my word, uh, and we shook hands on it, digitally, although it may be, uh, Wade is today's winner. Congratulations, thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. I'm just so glad that Mark's losing streak is back. You know, it might just be one mm. right now, but one is better than zero. It's good to be on top. And I'm very happy. Thank you for a very <laughs> fair episode. That really I happen? appreciate you honoring your word. And if Mark had just stuck around and not fucked with his audio setup, maybe he would have heard that. And then, you know, he would have had the handshake deal. But I decided to be here the whole time. I didn't leave during your uh, your hosting time like he did. So mm -hmm. I deserve this. <laughs> and thank you for a fair episode. <laughs> very fair. The fairest. You could say this is the fairest episode there could be because there was an agreed upon outcome. And the agreed <laughs> upon outcome is the outcome that we got. It's 100% fair. Yep. Everybody that was there and, and made terms and had something to offer and contribute uh, got what they deserved and what they were promised is very fair. Mark, as today's loser, how do you feel? Give us a speech. God, I just feel like me as a kid looking at some wooden pegs on the wall. <laughs> the deceit, the lies. The lie, no, the truths, the truths. It was a, it's a moral victory at the very least for you today because you definitely had a lot of points and Wade only got a little bit of points. That's true. So, you, know, uh, it's true. you got the moral victory, which Wade could tell you how good that feels. Are they rollover points? Uh, maybe. <gasps> Would you like to shake my hand and make a deal? Uh, for what? To to have your points roll over into the next episode that I host? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll shake. Yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah. I, I, I require no offer on your part. Mark, today you earned... <laughs> hang on, hang on. I'm stating the terms. Today you earned... I didn't actually write them down because they didn't matter, but I'm going to say that you earned 10 points today, Mark. 
Because you got a lot of them. You have 10 rollover points. Shall we shake on it? Yes, and shake. Uh... Can you send me, like, the cost of the pre-order for the next one so I can just buy some points so I can catch up that way? Yeah, no, I'm going to throw together an app, actually, you where you guys, can, you guys yeah. can buy distract tokens, and then um, you can use distract tokens in the app to redeem uh, points. And Yeah, so he got 10 points, so I need to get at least 10. I think if I buy two of the fifty nine ninety nine pack, that should get me to 10. Uh, so I may or may not remember this, Mark, so definitely you're going to want to remind me if you want this okay. to actually happen. All right, we're good at memory, so we yeah. will definitely Between remind. the both of us, I'm sure we won't forget that this happened. But these points last forever, so if you don't cash them in, you'll just have 10 rollover points sitting in the ether. Oh, at any great. point in the future of the show, well, you, and I'm the host, you're able to just cash those in. Mark, would you rather remember that you lost this way and get rollover points or forget it ever happened and feel like the show has always been fair? I'll remember. I'll never forget. Well, 52% of people say, uh... <laughs> never mind, we'll save that for your next hosting whenever we do that. Why do you need to kick me when I'm down? You already won. You both laughed at me. You laughed at me for being on the bottom by myself. Thank I you so much win. for I listening and or watching to today's silent. episode. I have been your host, Bob, my competitors, Mark and Wade. Make sure you check out their socials, Lord Minion 777 or Minion 777 and Markiplier. You probably have heard of them. We have a store with merch, store.distractablepodcast.com. And uh, yeah, we have a sword loser and a valiant victor. And uh, that's going to be it. Wade, when you host the next episode, I look forward to a uh, fair and equal judgment. And uh, I think everything's gonna, I think it's going to be great. I think everything's going to... I have no worries. I'll get it in the next one. I always perform my best. I'm sure, you, I'm sure you've got it, Mark. you got it in, in hand already, I'm sure. In hand. In hand. Just be careful, Mark. If you ever step away during an episode again, it might not end well. Oh, yeah, we'll see about that. We'll see about that. Uh, we'll see about that. I guess we will. For now, though, that's it. Goodbye. Thank you for watch listening. Podcast out. <laughs>